for coming to our meeting. First, I'd like to um, let everyone know we have a new selectman's admin clerk, Kelly Aker. And so, hi, Kelly. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. And this time, um, I'd ask if there are any agenda additions or deletions. I have some in front of me. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, and that would be to, uh, for Joe Peterson, um, approval of disbursement of funds um, for the work that was done over in the forest. So is there a motion to put that on? That? I'll uh, make a motion that we actually add that to right above approval of the minute meeting, meet, little, meeting minutes so that we uh, can get Joe in and out of here. Okay. I'll second that. That's a motion. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Doesn't look like it. <coughs> uh, also, we want to, um, the special, I look for uh, an agenda addition for the special meeting minutes of 923. I would go ahead and make that motion, and at the same time, I'm going to make a motion that we add an executive session following our select board members' concerns to discuss litigation. All right. Is is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Um, Joe, let's move right into... All right. What you got for us, pal? I'll give this to you. I thought about printing everything out, but I figured I'd... Here, and you can scroll through those. Oh, the uh, we spent a couple of days over there, the excavator did, um, Gary Norton. Uh, we created some new tra oh, connecting yeah. trails. We yeah, dressed up some of the trails that were there. Um, we moved the sign, as you can see, to a location where it can actually be seen. That's an awful nice sign to have hidden behind all those trees. Um, and put a couple rocks out there to try and prevent ATVs and a couple of logs. Unfortunately, rocks, believe it or not, over there are in short supply. Big ones. If, Cash, if you happen to run across some in your travels that need dumping somewhere, okay. that might be a great spot to do it. Similar to the size of 10 pictures. Similar to the size of that. I think that uh, those I got, logs are... I got hundreds up. for you. Everybody has hundreds. <laughs> but I, they picked that place pretty clean over That's the years. Those walls are... <laughs> some, put some, a couple of small holes in those walls, and they're deep, and they're, they're not full of big rocks, but they're full of rocks. So. Like we didn't, I didn't want to have them spend all their time excavating around looking for rocks, good. building trails and things like that. So, um, I don't have, an, I've, I was going to GPS all the trails and do all that eventually, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, so I can tell you what was there, what was added. I would say we probably doubled the amount of usable trails that are on the property. Mm -hmm. doing that, so. um, I'm trying to think of what else, the drainage down towards the swamp, we improved that. It's one of these things where water seeps out of the bank in places it's always going to be that's way in the back right yeah, yeah you go down and you take a it hooks to the <coughs> south um it's gets wet in there it's wet in there now i would ask people in the short term to kind of understand that it's fall <coughs> it's getting muddy it's going to be muddy it's newly disturbed ground and so it's um i've I think I may put some winter rye on some of the hills just to hold them in place and make sure we're okay. That way I don't think it's gonna be an issue one way or the other, but um, you know, I wanna have it there just in case, let a year of leaf litter get on top of it and hopefully that'll put in some root mass that you run into the, do you plant grass <coughs> on the trails or do you leave them and let leaf litter fall? If you plant grass, you really gotta mow them and it's an added expense. My opinion is I would probably leave them. The ones <coughs> out by the road have been seeded previously, and they're even, you know, they get up pretty high. And for a hiker walking through that, some people don't want to pull through that as they're walking along. So I would suggest in the woods to 
leaf litter is, I think, the best material to go with. So, unless you want to bring pea stone in, that's a so, whole other. Yeah. So there's not enough slope there for a runoff, or what do you mean? It, it's pretty flat, so we don't have gully washing or nothing like that. So you don't need to. Yeah, no. I mean, there shouldn't be any. I mean. I'm trying to think. He put in water bars and stuff and kept them kind of low on the slopes and stuff like that. So those are all in. Um, going in, you'll see as one of those pictures is of that where he actually drained. Um, I think that's it. That's actually a water bar going towards the. Um, so what I'm trying to do is get it off of the roof. That was actually came out of a former puddle, pretty good size one in there. So he pretty much change the elevation so the water can't sit there anymore and you know, just standard drainage stuff. I mean they're not none of them are crowned of course because it's right you don't have the ability to really do that out there but uh, well you could but you'd be spending a lot more money than we spent so um yeah so I mean it just ended up being slabbing in roads and and, uh, and again the seed I, I think I'll put some in but I don't know how what if it, it, it's it'll grow it'll take I mean it, as you know, it'll grow right up, but I don't know. The thing is, it'll grow up, especially for next year, it'll grow up about three, four feet high. Well, I know. And then, but it's a yearly annual. Right, so right. I just wanted it as a temp. year, it'll be, yeah. There'll be nothing there. Right. Which is what I was hoping. I, yep. think, I figured if I could get something to grow now, just keep stabilize it right. and let the summer do whatever it's going to do in the winter do it. That was one of my concerns. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what would you basically do what you're saying yeah. and hopefully you have no enough leaf mass or yeah. organic matter from the trees and stuff. Yeah, that's the whole, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, and you, typically it works and I usually, normal log jobs, I'll do some seeding of winter rye, but if they don't do a lot of it, usually come back and you end up with the leaf litter the next year. What was the total cost? 3000 All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so then there was four total and what I thought the next phase of the project as I delineated before would be to at some point have the um, town truck when they're available, truck some stone over and you and I could go over what might be the best stone to put in there. Uh, we got a decent base of, I think, <coughs> maybe we'll be before maybe that's, six months. That's for the, all the trails or just for the No, just for, the, just for the parking. parking. Right, right. The rest of it, I think we want to leave. Probably like an inch and three quarter dense graze and that way you got the fines in there plus. Right, that's what I was sort of thinking. And it helped pack in better. Yeah, and um, and I thought that, yeah, if you added, at some point if you came across some big rocks that are in your way doing what it is, you know, then, then of course, yeah, excavating wherever, you know, that would be a great place for them, so. And his invoice is here. Yeah. And I would, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but. Well, I, I only bring it up here, Joe. Yeah, for three grand. So you're looking for us to uh, just give you the okay. me to make that payment. Yeah. Make a motion that we authorize Joe to uh, make the payment to um, Norton. Norton property uh, yeah. management in the uh, amount of three thousand. Mm -hmm. Second for discussion. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Joe, nice work over there. Thanks a lot for yeah, doing. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone? <coughs> Negative thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you yeah. want to say, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay. No, no, I, I, I was just, yeah. I was just concerned about erosion and stuff, water quality. Well, water quality with loose soil and stuff. Shouldn't be a problem because we're, we're basically yeah. going per the AMP standards that I would use on any logging job. Only these are a little bit less. Um, uh, what, they're not big roads and they haven't been used previously. So what he's done is on, especially on those slopes, we've got good water bars. They're not deep but there's more of them and he's drained them off in ways that you can still walk like when i close out a logging job i want a water bar like this i don't really care if someone can get over it or not right they're, they're building different. a hiking trail so we're trying to make sure yep. they can get over mm -hmm. it and you know so that's what we did and so he's got more drainage that way then down near the um swamp what we did was we just used some of the existing stuff but made it so we could kind of tip the drainage toward the, you know, off the road more. I, I have, haven't been up 
I have not personally been up there. Yep. Um, what I'm thinking is there's probably a lot of tree can canopy on over the log road of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. except for the very beginning. So yeah. the impact of raindrops and stuff would minimal. Yeah. And no, plus, once you get some, uh, like I said, the leaf matter is what makes it right. work well. So. The dam that was originally built by our neighbors, the Beavers. Yes. And uh, but anyway, how's that? Look it looks not as big, bad as it was. I took care of that problem a couple of times. But yeah. not, I wouldn't say I took care of it, but we made them go away it. for a while. We managed it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not what it was. That place is going to ebb and flow forever. There could be a time where it could potentially flood, flood a section of that road for the pack. You just you yeah. don't know what they're going to do, and they're super unpredictable. And all, so, But um, in terms of for now, it looks, I think it's, it's looking good. And it's, you know, as I say, it's fresh dirt and it's been raining so a little muddy back there what i'd like you to do is take that give the heidi we can make a copy of it okay and i already have a copy yeah oh okay well here you go on joe keep that for your, all right your books I'll so this books. actually i'll send this with it and uh i'll let you folks get on with it all right thanks, thanks a lot joe thank you have a good one sure. all right it's <coughs> time i asked for uh Approval of the regular minutes, September 23rd. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll actually be so bold as to make a motion for both sets of minutes Good to man. approve them both must as be, written. Must be football season. Is there a second? I wasn't here for one of them, so <laughs> we'll let cash. Cash. A second with corrections. All right. Is I there any I corrections? What would you find, cash? Well, I'm puzzled. September 24th on top on both, and mm -hmm. September 23rd would both be on Mondays, that's all. <clears throat> so, uh, can you explain that? There are regular meeting minutes, so there was a special meeting for interviews held Earlier. Monday the 23rd, <coughs> then we Four had a regular meeting the 23rd, <coughs> the, the special meeting the 23rd was recessed and reconvened Tuesday the 24th. Okay, so that, this set here should say Tuesday instead of Monday then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there any other corrections needed? So we're just changing that to Tuesday the 24th. Right. That right. makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. Otherwise, they look good to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I'm good with that change. All right. So there's been a motion made, seconded. We've had discussion. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Let's get right on the highway. Uh, do you have a report for us? I have um, a driveway culvert a permit that had come in and would like to have the select board for suggestion of approval on higher road. It is John Jonathan Hawkins. Hawkins. Um, I've done a site visit and where he's it's definitely needs a culvert in that section is it a replacement or is it is going to be a new okay. um, to a barn that he wants to a gr barn garage that he wants to there's some paperwork build. that has to be filled out on that. yeah and we have some paperwork on that we'll get a all right, so All what you're looking road. for permission, if uh, <coughs> maybe you could make a uh, motion to um, have the select board chair sign that or whatever once the uh, paperwork is done. I think usually the road commissioner just signs it. Well, well, I, get, I need approval from the... You, well, we ahead. approve it, but yeah. you just right. sign it. And I sign it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I'll make a motion that we uh, approve Cash's request for the driveway culper on higher road and that he be authorized to sign the permit. Is there a second for discussion? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, you you have looked at it, you said, Cash? Yes. And how big a cover does it got to be? Uh, we're looking at an 18-inch. 18 18-inch, 18 okay. And a setback away from the road somewhere. <coughs> but still on the right-of-way? Still on our right-of-way. Okay. Um, all right, any further discussion on that? Nope, that's all I have. I have nothing more. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? What else, Cash? Uh, just an update. The grader was still working on the 
getting the radiator fixed in it at temporary we're having a local town just help us out a little bit with grading um, just to somewhat smooth things out it's not perfect but he's doing the best job he can um, roadside more actually we just got that back going today so the we can go back more on the roadsides and stuff can't think of anything else unless anybody else got comments or suggestions for anything. Yeah. And I know you're focusing on some of the back roads that didn't get done before because I yeah. know I got. Yep. I uh, passed one on. Mow mowing. Yeah, because yeah. I passed one on to you oh, there definitely. a week or so ago. And so. actually, we just test drove it basically this afternoon just to make sure everything was working fine, you know, down to Walker Mountain Road on the flats and stuff. So people are going to be saying, well, how come that got cut two three times and that's why yeah testing yeah. test it yep. okay. stay close by to the shop instead of driving all the way up there does anyone have any questions for the road commissioner all right you're done i take it yep will start has something or okay um our guest was joe uh any public comments on anything? Take the warrants. I haven't had those yet. Yeah. Uh, I didn't find <coughs> All right. Uh, old business zoning administrator updated fee request. Go for it, Jeff. Uh, I'm up. Okay. Um, well, folks, uh, I. I printed out a uh, little summary of the seminar that was uh, held on October 2nd in Burlington. Uh, there were uh, five attorneys, four attorneys, excuse me, uh, teaching this training course that was designated to assist lawyers for continuing ed credits and zoning administrators who don't get continuing ed credits. Um, my summary here, uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, discuss the um, four or five subjects that were uh, presented. One was on case law. Uh, I'm um, always looking for case law to be able to support any decisions that I make as a zoning administrator. And and uh, current cases uh, that have been resolved are are always great tools in the box to use. Um, the second part of the session was. Uh, the constitutional limitations on zoning actions. This was a little bit of a history lesson to start with, but it did get into everyday practice of zoning when it comes to subjects uh, on hand today, such as equal protection of, and, and property rights and police power when it comes to um, restricting use of, of, of an owner's property. Uh, then there was a section on um, challenges and appeals to zoning administrator decisions. Uh, this is every day in the, in, the, in the life of a zoning administrator. So anything there was um, somewhat uh, redundant for me. I've been at it a little bit, but, but um, for new zoning administrators, it was helpful. And, and then the last one was ethics and zoning use and land law, which the attorney was um, a professor at um, the Vermont Law College, but he was very interested in talking to his co-attorneys about billing practices with statutes in mind and that about the subject at hand. So they give a grading, um, they give a grading uh, evaluation sheet at the end. I gave the prof an F on that one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, overall, though, um, I, I've been to a lot of these over time. And I will give this a B average type grade on my own. Um, I always go away with these things uh, learning something, but when you have five attorneys in a room, I never miss the opportunity to pick their brains on things that are matters at hand and Clarendon included. Um, even if the matter at hand that I have to find an answer for uh, may apply to Clarendon um, down the road and just that alone to be able to um, converse with an attorney who is in charge in $230 or $50 an hour 
is worth the admission price. So, so that was useful. Um, and then as a codicil, um, there's two training seminars coming up in October. One is the Vermont Fall Planning and Zoning Forum. I am not attending, um, but I would encourage passing this information on to the planning commissioners who probably have it already to maybe attend. And then um, there is a workshop on Halloween actually in Rutland that's held by the Agency of Natural Resources. It's a full day seminar for all of 25 bucks and they provide lunch. I can see why the Agency of Natural Resources picked Halloween. Yeah, well, it's at, it's, at the, it's at the Asia Bloomer Building Conference Room, which isn't very big. But it's $15 for a half day and 25 bucks for the full day, and that includes lunch. So I'm already signed up to go the half day. Another town is buying the ticket. And, and the first half day is related to zoning. The rest of it is related to other issues. So I've, I've provided the board members a uh, agenda for both of these, which is relatively fresh print. I'm going to give Heidi a copy, and maybe she'll be kind enough to pass it on um, to planning commissioners and ZBA members. Um, I think training is invaluable. And the one in Rutland can't be any handier. So, so uh, that would be um, my two cents on that. The other item coming up, I guess, is the uh, s issue of the zoning fees that I think was first on the agenda, but whatever. <laughs> Here's some more copies. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the board needs them or not. Uh, on these uh, uh, VLCT zoning and planning forums, they hold them twice a year. I'm a big fan of those. You get about 130 people in the room from all over the state. You get a couple of e-court judges, um, usually. And the first session, which is in spring, right after the legislation, um, after the legislators have ad adjourned, is usually full of good information. So it's, um, it's uh, something I encourage. And this is, you're going to go to this. I'm not going to the VLCT one because I've, the subject matter I've been to, it's redundant. Um, and I have a conflict, but I am going to the one on Halloween in Rutland because the first part of the day is zoning related matters. In fact, the first part of the day addresses agricultural matters. So you might want to take a look at that for the farmers in the room. So, so you, you're, you're asking? I'm not asking for anything. Okay. I'm just reporting. Um, <laughs> um, I actually, the, the board was, uh, the town was kind enough to already pay the tuition for the, for the uh, Burlington meeting, mm -hmm. and we're all set. I'm not asking for anything else. All right. I, um, anybody on the board have any questions for Jeff while he's sitting here? Anybody in the vast audience want to ask? Yes, Maureen. I would just say, you know, since Jeff has been on as a zoning administrator, you know, um, nobody's felt a need to appeal anything, and it's it's really nice to have him aboard. Well, that's nice of you to say, Marjorie. I mean, we've had a couple of appeals, and one of them was in favor of the town. That would be the motorcycle club. Yeah. Which is then... That was a little dicey. <laughs> well, it's it's not a record setter <laughs> so, so. but I, I I think you have a good <coughs> since we uh, have someone who is uh, cares about zoning and things like this so you've been doing a good job uh, Jeff oh thank you I appreciate that uh, I'm not the health officer though I went <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I, I, I when it comes to out, out fields outside of zoning I, I have to say my I have a little bit of knowledge um, but not enough to be really uh, an expert in anything else. So. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come here, and um, I don't know, maybe we could consider at least headed up to Rutland on Halloween. Well, I, I, I mean, take a look at the agenda. If the subject matter is of interest to you, it's it's handy. And, 
And um, actually, the Agency of Natural Resources holds a, a, a conference every year when governments cooperate. <coughs> the big one once a year is in Malpelier at the National Life Building. And then that's when the governor comes as the keynote speaker. It's an all-day event. Basically, it's um, uh, a smorgasbord of subjects. You sign up for three subjects in the morning and three subjects of interest in the afternoon. Um, there's usually a, a lunch and a keynote speaker, and it's, I, I recommend it. Um, it's always a good event. Since that was so successful and actually overflowing the capacity of the National Life Con <coughs> Convention facilities, they've started doing minor subject conventions in more local areas of Vermont. So. Um, there's one in Springfield. The subject matter in Springfield, for example, is different than the subject matter in Rutland. So um, I've given the board, I think, if you don't have it, I just gave Heidi extra copies, um, the agenda and the information on the workshop. I mean, the cost is negligible. And, and uh, you do get to hobnob with other select board members. For example, the last VLCT um, forum which was in spring, it was held late, it was June, <clears throat> which was held in Lake Maury. Um, I actually didn't charge Clarendon for that one, didn't ask for funding on that one. Um, but the two environmental court judges were there. Um, there was 135 people in the room, of which 10% were select board members. 35% um, were zoning administrators. 40% were planning commissioners or DRB or ZBA, and then the rest was a smorgasbord of attorneys looking for continuing ed credits and uh, uh, um, um, town Did you have any legislators? So I'm sorry? Did any legislators show up? There are often legislators that speak, but it's not every one. So you have to look at the agenda. And it's usually hot button topics. So like in the spring, Right after the legislators have adjourned, um, you get a you get a summary from the uh, VLCT typically on what was passed, what was bagged to the next session. We're in a biennium, so there's a bunch of uh, new subjects top of the list for next session. The three, um, fifteen dollar an hour wage, um, recreational marijuana, and and what's the third one? What was the third one? What would be the hot topic button? It's escaping me. I'm sorry, but uh, but they basically didn't get passed by the um, legislature in in the in the last session, but because it's a biennium, biennium, it's going to get um, uh, front page news real yeah, quick. Look that way. So. All right. I can think of the third one. I'll speak up. <laughs> All right. Any Bubble into the surface as we talk. So. Anything <laughs> else, Jeff? <clears throat> well, the other item on the agenda, if you want to skip around a little bit here, sir, is the uh, fee schedule issue that I proposed, and and you had asked me to come and discuss further. So, okay, why don't you? This isn't certainly anything that needs to be discussed tonight. I just came to at your request to see if I could explain it. So briefly, briefly. All right. So briefly, um, the fee schedule we have in Clarendon. Uh, is is a very short five line item which doesn't add any information on how someone should come in and pay a fee and the fee schedule for the clerks was also increased by state legislature on effective July 7 uh, July 1st of this year so our old fee schedules are outdated so because the state legislature changed the clerk fees I found that a segue to come in and say, well, at least make the fee schedule a little more informative, which is what I've attempted to do here. The draft of the fee schedule um, is exactly the same as the current fee schedule, with the exception of the town clerk fees. But you'll see instead of five lines, there's more information for someone coming in to, to understand the fee schedule and apply the correct fee when they come in with an application. Gloria, do you have a copy? I'm sorry, do you have a copy of this? No, of course. No, I just, I just, the ink is still wet. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 um, 
So, okay. you know, it, it, we discussed it. Uh, I presented it at uh, one of the earlier meetings, but, you know, you, you, I wasn't here, so you wisely tabled it. So, <clears throat> so I, it really doesn't make any difference to me, except that it would save Gloria a lot of frustration and me a lot of time, because I have to call these folks up and say, oh, you submitted this fee, but it's not right. And quite honestly, gentlemen, two cents a square foot doesn't make a hell of beans when it comes to the fee schedule. The town is not making any money on the fee schedule. The ski fee schedule is, is a negative cash flow. All right. So especially when it comes to appropriate municipal panels and reviews that require advertising and hearings and so on, just so you know. That isn't the point here. The point is, is I wanted to make the fee schedule a little more easy for folks to understand. It's kind of a worksheet. And, and therefore, and then to add a fly in the ointment, I said, well, let's get rid of the two cents a square foot for residential stuff. If you're building a 14,000 square foot warehouse, make it 10 cents a square foot, and then it adds up to something that justifies the time involved. But at two cents a square foot for a guy building a shed, it's silly. You know, it really is. So I, I, I have a, a flat fee schedule proposed as well. And you can compare it. And Invite me back, and I'll. After uh, you've had a chance to read it, we'll talk about it again. How uh, is this a state <coughs> mandate? Or is no. this something the state has mandated that the clerk's fee goes up to fifteen dollars per page for recording and twenty-five dollars per mylar sheet. Because I'm looking in here, <coughs> and they're this on the second page, halfway down, about the structures. Okay. Um, Agricultural about, structures. Well, and. Well, not only the agricultural structures, but be even below that, yeah. when you're talking about the shipping containers and stuff like that. So that means if some, and it says from not only occupational living use, but also for materials. Right. So if we got to, like myself, when I have storage trailers, I put stuff in them. Okay. So let me ask you a question. If I went to Garden Tech and bought a, an Amish built shed and I dropped it on my land and I left it there for longer than a temporary time right. period in the town, wouldn't that be a structure that needs a permit? It's an assembly of materials for occupancy of use. That's the definition of a structure. So, um, so if I bought a garden shed or a garage, a portable garage, you know, a pre-assembled garage from Garden Time that dropped it in, there's probably no question for not a farmer but a resident that he should have a permit. I totally understand that, but I'm okay, looking I'm, at... I'll, let me like, just finish okay. my thought, if I may. Um, if I buy a shipping container from Cam's up in Pittsford, and he drops that same thing in and leaves it in the same footprint, and it's there for years after years after years, isn't that an assembly of materials for storage and use? Where? Occupancy and use? And you shouldn't that have a permit? Put on wheels. Where is it a tractor trailer body like I have? Is the tractor wheels? trailer registered and has yeah. license to go on the road? No, it isn't. Okay. Is it a farm vehicle? It is for farm storage. Okay, farm vehicles are exempt under the Required Agricultural Practices Act. But if you're going to use a, a, an old box trailer that's you know not road worthy and you park it in the back of your lot, um, much to the chagrin of your neighbors, shouldn't there be a permit process involved where the neighbors can say, I don't want to look at that ugly thing, where's this permit? I had to buy a permit for my Amish shed. Even if it has wheels on it right. and stuff? If, if, if it's a trailer that's registered to go on the road, it's exempt just because it's a trailer. Anything that's licensed and inspected can go on the road. So whatever you buy, Matt, you got to make under, sure it's registered. <laughs> another exemption <laughs> under state law, another exemption under state law would be an agricultural exemption, which covers just about everything else. Um, but, but when you're talking about a single family residence who buys an old box trailer and puts it in his backyard, in a residential neighborhood, and he's using it for storage, not intended to transport, isn't that a structure? That's for the planning commission to decide. He's right. He's right. I'm sorry. My neighbor put it in two of those stupid trailer things, put them right on the line where they didn't belong, didn't adhere to any of the setbacks, and it looked like crap. He needed a permit. That's what Mr. Knapp is questioning the select board right. about yeah. on a Pritchett property. Yep. On Cold River Road there. So here is the rest of the story. I mean, the rest of the story is that I've always held that good definitions make for good zoning, and our definitions currently are pretty thin. Um, and, then, and then these issues 
aren't exactly old, but they're relatively more uh, current because they're getting more citizen attention. And people will call me and said, well, uh, I mean, I got a fence and I can't get to my garage up on, on uh, Mumford Road because this fence is in my way, you know? So, well, the fence doesn't need a permit. Not an uncommon situation. A very um, legal thing to do is to put a fence up up to six feet in height in the town of Clarendon. So any, any zoning changes have to start in the planning commission? Absolutely. And it's, then not a, it's not a zoning issue. What I'm saying is these aren't new changes. These are following the zoning rules as they're written today. They're just not, a, they've just never been um, discussed. You know, it's kind of been under the radar. Am I looking to go back and see everybody who's got a shipping container that they've installed five years ago? No. But what I'd like to do is get an education process out now and move forward from there. So what, what's your recommendation relative to uh, educational? Well, I mean, this helps. This will be on the website if it's approved by the board. And, and information is, is power. If you look at the existing um, fee schedule, it's, it's uh, not even complete, in my humble opinion. But um, second of all, it's definitely outdated. And, and so what I've tried to do is here is provide information and provide a, an outline that makes it simpler for people applying to um, understand the rules. Now, the fee schedules that exist now, is that policy? Oh, it's approved by the board, yeah. Right. It was in 2000 and <clears throat> the fee schedule was last approved and it went through the Planning Commission, I think, and the fee schedule was last approved uh, in 2016. But they didn't change the format. So the fee schedule uh, didn't define what an accessory structure is. And there's not many people that go to the zoning regulations to look what an accessory structure is. So what I'm trying to do is provide information so they can see that <clears throat> the uh, storage container, if they leave it there long enough, is going to be an accessory structure. So, uh, but he's not changing. He's not changing any of the rules. I'm not changing the they're rules. They already exist. I'm just trying just to provide information it available to, to the people. Rules in the right. yeah. <clears throat> Those rules already do exist. So, if, if people don't get the applications, there's penalties and fines and. Well, I'm not a big fan of 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 that. Um, I prefer education. So when I get an application, I'm usually on the phone on a Saturday night, calling them and say, "Well, you gotta you gotta give me some more information here." I did come up with a different form than uh, as an application. Um, I'm always available to to meet with folks to help them with the application. Um, you, would you suggest then putting? The second page uh, as an attachment to our web page? I think it should be replaced. I mean, it, it, again, <clears throat> I'd like you to look at it. It's certainly not something to decide tonight. I'm glad to talk about it further. Um, but but there's, there's really more information here, and, and folks like farmers should appreciate that they just can't put up a barn under state law without applying for an intent to build an agricultural structure, notice, notice to build an agricultural structure to the town of Claret. And, and that was in the state law uh, from day one. And the idea is if you build a barn and you don't tell anybody, how is the town going to know? If you remove a barn and don't tell anybody, the town's going to keep taxing you until you tell them. So this kind of clarifies you have to tell them when you build or when you knock it down. And that's really kind of the point of this form that I've submitted. <clears throat> but um, the Agricultural Practices Act is getting more and more, and the Required Agricultural Practices Act is getting more and more complicated than it ever has been. And, and you know, they start with a small farm. They define now a small farm as four acres or less. And it's a small farm operation, four acres to ten acres. And then as you farmers know, you go up and have more critters and more acreage under production, the rules um, apply. I don't get involved in that. What I'm saying is, if you want to build a barn, and I'll give you a real life example. If you want to build a barn and you also run an excavation business, the barn is non-conforming 
and the required Agricultural Practices Act allow you to build the barn for agricultural purposes. You're storing your hay in it, you're um, um, housing your critters in it, whatever, agricultural. But what else, it, it, let's say the farm closes and all of a sudden you're bringing in outside equipment and repairing equipment in a non-conforming structure um, uh, for, for a barn that was only approved as a non-conforming structure uh, as a barn. What do you do then? Basically non-farm income. Non-farm income. And non-farm income is very limited under the rules. In 2017, they wanted to exp there was bills proposed to expand the use of an empty barn, for example. I get these applications all the time. I have an empty dairy barn. I'd like to do self-storage. I want to do, you know, um, uh, a birdhouse flea market. I want to do something else that isn't related to farming, but it supplements the non-farm income. The legislature in 2018 only limited it to farm-related activities. If you're having um, a restaurant that serves farm-based products, you have a tourism-based industry that brings people onto the farm to learn about the farm, those are all farm-related exemptions and farm-based income. But if you're now manufacturing a newfangled type of motorcycle, or trailer or something that isn't related to farming in your barn and it exceeds especially 50% of the farm income, then that changes the rules of the game. So there's room for improvement in, the, in that exemption, in my opinion. Um, the biggest one I get is I want to have weddings in my barn. Hmm. You know, I want to have regular events. That's fine. You have five weddings a year, seasonal use, no big deal. But if you do what they did in Wallingford, which they took the barn down at the White Rocks Inn and they put a quarter of a million dollars and made it a year-round facility, that requires permits. And they got them. I mean, they did. Not but all of them. We're working on them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is, is the, the rules are getting more <laughs> clarified at the state level. And <clears throat> the problem is, is the information isn't going out at the civilian level at the same rate. So... So your suggestion, and I think what I'm hearing is that we ought to put this, at least the second page information, as a link on our website. Yeah, right now the website still has the old application <coughs> form. I'd like to see that updated, and then this fee schedule could go with that as well. Um, and and hopefully this is more information. The problem is people like signs don't read anything, you know. But but at least I could say here it is. Please look at it, um, and and it might help Gloria because unfortunately people come in and they really are unsure of what their application is. So what, what do you think, as town clerk? You think this would be some pretty good information to put on? Absolutely. Our, yeah. More information about it. It won't be a cure-all. It's not intended to be oh, a cure-all. But this first start. But it, it's information that people don't have now, and so it's not it's not technical information. It's just plain English. But it's uh, hopefully information that's easy to read and and offers. Uh, I mean, if nothing else, offers it, the fact that the state has dictated the clerk's fees have gone up. So the other thing they did in that bill is uh, Clarendon never required surveys in their, well, Clarendon doesn't have subdivision regulations, so it never required surveys. And other towns um, that I know of never required surveys be recorded. State took care of that. They said, from now on, any subdivision or boundary line adjustment has to be done by a licensed surveyor, a mile I prepared and recorded in the town. So, so, you know, it's an additional cost to a property owner but it's probably a cost long overdue, and it adds t to minimizing confusion down the road. If they had, you know, if they had done that for a number of properties I could think of in Clarendon, there wouldn't be boundary line disputes today. So. Can't build a walnut tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Robert, we can't build that thousand cow farm barn we want to build. <laughs> Now, you could build a barn, but what my suggestion yeah. usually is, is <laughs> if the barn is conforming to the setbacks as set by the town, and you build it under the intent to build the agricultural structure, 
um, notice, that's fine. You close the farm and you decide to build some kind of a manufacturing facility inside that barn and it's a conforming structure, all you have to do is apply for a change of use permit and you're good to go. If you build that barn five feet from the town road under the exemption preferred by the, allowed by the required Agricultural Practices Act, and then you change the use to a manufacturing facility, what happens then? Quite honestly, I've heard it from the, um, uh, the, the state. It's, it's kind of an undetermined answer. I haven't gotten a clear determination on that. Oh, I'm sure it'll come up with something. I, I'm, I'm sure it'll happen, too. I mean, there's, you know, bound to happen, so. Do you guys want to put this on the, ask Gloria to put it on the site? How do, the, how do these new fees um, compare to other towns? Um, they're about average. Uh, they're, this is certainly not high or low, but they're average. Yeah. Um, you'll see I did a comparison with that silly two cents a square foot calculation, and then I did one that basically used the existing fee schedule, but changed how you can figure out what the fee is, and it's about the same amount of money. Um, and that for, for the example I used, uh, for a single family, a new single family house under construction with a garage and a porch, probably the number one single family house permit, um, <clears throat> the, the existing fee schedule, if properly calculated, is the same as the proposed fee schedule. Uh, the sheds and detached accessory structures are the number one permit in every town, um, and and by far, you know, the number <coughs> one application I receive, and I do between 150 and 200 applications a year now. So. Um, uh, there's a little bit of confusion when it comes to Clarendon, but again, you just set a flat fee for an accessory structure, bang, 20 bucks, or 20 bucks up to a certain size, and then charge the $15 uh, recording fee. It's the same as what we're doing. Now. It's really, you know, not a, not a significant difference whatsoever. And I would say Clarendon's a little bit on the, uh, on the low side, but average in terms of fees. If you build a house and then want to build a porch, incorporate a porch in it, it's going to cost you another 20 bucks to... The way it does now is is it's a flat fee of $50 plus two cents a square foot. So you have to do three or four lines worth of calculation to come up with the answer and then add the clerk's fee. What I'm saying is we're just going to give you a schedule. Base house, 50 bucks. You add a porch, 20 bucks. You add a um, garage to the house. 20 bucks for that. As long as it's all at the same application under new construction. If you want to add the garage later on in life, that's a new application, a new permit, then you, we start again with a new fee. Well, I think that, you know, at least if somebody can see this online, they can expect, especially the second page. Yeah. They can and, and, and realistically, gentlemen, this is what I'm here for. I mean, mm -hmm. people call and they're confused. I'm available. I'm available mostly on weekends, which may not always work for their schedule. But um, the other parts of this application form that I hope we relay is, is that there's a timeline involved. You can't put a permit in, expect to get it the next day, and start construction two days later. The state <coughs> has a 15-day warning period. And and um, while we don't want to be obnoxious about it, it's the state law, not the town law, and we're required to follow that. So at least I can tell them what it is. <laughs> so. Well, what do you think? You want to get it on to the website? Well, we only do that is to have a vote. Well, well look it over. Uh, you know, look it over and vote on it next next meeting. We need, do we want to? No, because I don't believe in zoning, period. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the right town. <laughs> do you want to incorporate this later on with the town clerk? Do you want to be handling part of this? Right, let's bring this up. At, let's do a little 
research. Research. research and we'll and next meeting. Bring it up next meeting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Heidi. I'm with that. I mean, yeah. Whatever you gentlemen decide. Tabling it. Is that what Tabling it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, zoning actually by, by Supreme Court decision is intended to be a minimum encumbrance on property owners' rights. I believe in that. But I don't write the rules. I'm just tasked here with telling people what they are and applying them. So talk oh. to the Planning Commission. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to come in. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Put, put this in my file. Don't touch it. Well, that I'm interested. <laughs> Where's the glasses? Let me get them on. Oh. Not these glasses. Where are those glasses? You got them on? No, these aren't the ones. All right, moving right along. Clarendon Transfer Station assurance letter. Oh, that's the letter we have to do yeah, every year telling them that we have the funds to keep it going. We have to do that yearly. Do we have a uh, yeah. copy? Do you have a copy of that, Bob? Yeah, I think that's the one you're looking for. Yeah, that wasn't on my chairman's so. hand. Yeah, let me read it. Uh, please accept this letter as assurance of sufficient financial capability of, on the part of the town of Clarendon to provide closure or provide foreclosure of the Clarendon transfer station as provided for, excuse me, in the application for certification. This financial assurance is predic predicated upon the town's power of taxation. The Clarendon <laughs> transfer station is a duly authorized facility and program of the town. If there are any further questions or concerns, please call us and I entertain a motion. And I'll make the motion that the chairman signs that on behalf of the board. There's yes. second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, now it comes down to town officers reports. Um, Heidi, do you have anything that you want to throw out there? Mm, tax due date is Saturday, October 19th, which is this coming Saturday. And I will be in office um, tomorrow through Saturday from 10 to 4. So yes, I will be here on Saturday, Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Otherwise, normal hours. Otherwise, normal hours are usually Monday through Thursday, 10 to 4. Okay. Anything else, Heidi? No, sir. Town clerk, want to stand up? And I have nothing right now. <laughs> Matt, as safety individuals, do you have any? Yeah, I did, did fire prevention Friday, and uh, we're doing uh, trunk or treater on the 25th with the school. Um, yeah, things are going good. And... Uh, Grange Hall, we took out a few air conditioners and uh, got rid of those and using heat pumps now. Uh, how's that all working? Pretty working good. Yeah. Working good. Yep. Yep. Well, we decided that we were going to go into executive session here, but do we want to hear select board members' concerns right now while we're on TV? Bob, mm -hmm. do you have anything? Uh, not as much concern, just... Uh, Fill the void then. Last Wednesday night, I attended the Solid Waste District meeting. As we all know, I don't know if you know or not, Jim O'Gorman is gone. We have a new really district manager. His name is Mark O'Shea. Okay. He came on a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah, Jim was supposed to get done, I believe the 28th was the date, and I was a little surprised when I found out he was <coughs> gone earlier, but maybe he just had something going, I don't know. But he's moving back up north. And, uh, the only other real thing is I'm looking forward to uh, 2020. The big issue is the food waste. Yep. And of course the state's saying you got to do it. But there seems to be some people that are kind of, let's just say disappointed the way it's going at this point and some are just totally against it. But uh, I think it's going to have to be done. It's going to be quite expensive. It was kind of a just an off-the-cuff figure the other night. They're trying to figure somewhere around $95 a ton right now. 
It's going to be pricey. Yeah. But uh, beyond that, there's not much doing with them. Thank you, Bob. Yes? Yeah, I just want to give heads up. I've been in communication with the sh Sheriff's Department. Um, I've had people commenting about the speed on, especially on our new bot top on East Clarendon Road. So, and the sheriffs are aware of it and they've been patrolling it so much, somewhat. And sure. they'll concentrate more on that area. Yeah. I don't have anything, Rob. I don't have anything tonight. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second it. Uh, and I would make that motion with no time limit. <coughs> Great. So, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 